Fifth grade Go Math, Chapter 3, Lesson 8, Essential Question. How can place value help you add decimals? Unlock the problem. Henry recorded the amount of rainfall that fell over two hours. In the first hour, Henry measured two and thirty-five hundredths centimeters of rain. In the second hour, he measured one and eighty-two hundredths centimeters of rain. Henry estimated that about four centimeters of rain fell in two hours. What is the total amount of rain that fell? How can you use this estimate to decide if your answer is reasonable? You need to underline what you're being asked to find, and in this case, there are two things you're being asked to find. Uh, circle the important information, and then also underline any other important mathematical terms to help you know which operations to perform. You should have squiggle underlined two different questions. The first one is what is the total amount of rain that fell? The second one is how can you use this estimate to decide if your answer is reasonable? So we need to know that the numbers that we'll be working with for the total amount is two and thirty-five hundred centimeters and one and eighty-two hundred centimeters. I also circled the label here so I knew what label to use at the end when I write my answer. The estimate is about four centimeters and we'll use that after we have our actual. So now we need to add two and thirty-five hundredths plus one and eighty-two hundredths. Step one is to add the hundredths first. Now if you're going to be writing it vertically like this is, you need to make sure that you line up your decimals. So what I'm going to do now, because this is me lining up my decimals, is I'm just going to bring my decimal down now. And in the hundredths place we have a five and a two, five two. So five hundredths plus two hundredths equals what? Well five plus two equals seven, seven hundredths. Okay, is there a need to regroup? Nope. 7 is less than 10, so I'm okay. The next step is then to add the tenths and ones, regroup as needed. So we're starting just like normal addition, starting on the right hand side and working our way left. So now we're on the tenths. 3 tenths plus 8 tenths equals 11. So we're going to write 11 and we are going to have our one from there and then we're regrouping and we'll just write it up there because that's 11 this is 10 and 1 is 11 so that's how that regrouping is showed so two ones for the ones place we have two ones plus one one and then our regrouped one is four ones so we record that here, and we recorded as we worked. So just for checking, we can draw a quick picture. So we started with two ones and thirty-five hundredths, and then one and eight, E two hundredths and regroup those. So now my picture actually matches my work up here. And so for our actual, we have four and seventeen hundredths centimeters of rain fell. And if we rounded four and seventeen hundredths, the 1 means that we're staying down at the 4, and since 4 and 17 hundredths is close to the estimate of 4, the answer is reasonable, meaning that it makes sense. Turn your page over. So equivalent decimals. 
When adding decimals, you can use equivalent decimals to help keep the numbers aligned in each place. Add zeros to the right of the last digit as needed so that the add-ins have the same number of decimal places. And this next one is an example of what they mean. But equivalent decimals is, if I had one, I could also write one decimal zero. It's still just one. Or I could have two and four tenths, which is the same as two and forty hundredths. Uh, this just has the zero on there, but these are equivalent. So let's go to try this. And from this point on, in a lot of our lessons, they're going to want you to estimate first, because that way you can know right off if your answer is reasonable or not. So we're going to start with an estimate. So we're going to estimate the sum of 20 and 4 tenths plus 13 and 76 hundredths. The estimate right here is 20. The 4 makes the 0 stay down. It doesn't round up, so it stays at 20. The 7 in the tenths column rounds that 3 up, so that's how we have a 14. So our estimate is 20 plus 14, which equals 34. So our answer should be somewhere close to 34. Step two is to actually find the sum, starting with the hundredths, going to the tenths, ones, and tens. So starting to the right and moving left, and regrouping as necessary. Now, when we started out, 20 and 4 tenths only had one decimal number, digit, while 13 and 76 hundredths had two digits in the decimals. But we line up our decimals, so that's what we have right here. Our decimals are lined up, and so that means that we would have the 4 and the 7 lined up, but nothing over the 6. So we're adding a 0 as a placeholder. Remember, 4 tenths is the same as 40 hundredths, and so that makes it an equivalent decimal. It doesn't change the value at all. So now, and we can add it to the right because it's a decimal place. So now we just add as normal. So 0 plus 6 equals 6. 4 plus 7 equals 11, so we need to regroup because it's 10 or greater. 1, and then I regroup my other. We have 0 plus 3 plus the 1 regrouping, which is 4. And then 2 plus 1 is 3. Now, is our answer reasonable? We'll get to that. Because our actual is 34 and 16 hundredths. And then if we look below, right here, it asks, is your answer reasonable? Explain. So, does this answer make sense? The answer is yes, and then how can we use our estimate to back our statement up? And we can't just answer yes. When they say explain, that means you have to have at least one sentence. So we're going to say yes, 34 and 16 hundredths rounds to 34, which is our estimate, or which was our estimate. So that proves that it is a reasonable answer. We're now going to move on to the share and show. Before you press pause to get started, I want to remind you that they do want an estimate, so you need to round these generally to the whole, whole number. If they don't tell you specifically to round to a decimal place, generally just round to the nearest whole number. So I need to see an estimate, and then I need to see your actual. 
Um, in four and five, you need to make sure that you line up your decimals, and if you need to add a zero, you may do that to help you keep aligned. Go ahead and press pause while you work through the share and show. When you are finished, then you may press play to check your answers. For number one, I did my estimates, so my estimate is eight, and now I will just add them like normal, remembering to bring down my decimal. For number four, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put my decimals in place and then I'm going to set them up. Um, I'm going to go six and thirty-four hundredths, there's my decimal, and then I'm going to go three and eight tenths, and then I'm going to add my zero to help me stay aligned. So 4 plus 0, oops, I forgot my estimate. So 6 and 34 tenths rounds to 6. 3 and 80 hundredths rounds to 4. So my estimate is going to be 10. But now I can find my actual. 4 plus 0 is 4. 3 plus 8 is 11, regrouping. 6 and 3 is 9, plus 1 is 10 and I need to bring down my decimal. So my estimate is reasonable. It is close to what I got. And then same thing with five. I'm gonna do my decimals, and that was really big, and then set up my problem that way. I have my estimate, now I'm gonna find my answer. 3 plus 0 is 3, 6 and 6 is 12, regrouping, 5 and 2 is 7, plus 1 is 8, bringing down my decimal, my answer is 8 and 23 hundredths. Briefly going over the on your own section, um, the first part is exactly like the Sharon show, I expect to see estimates, but the bottom part right here, the hot problems, these ones are word problems, so they just want you to set up the problem that the words tell you to do. And then down here at the bottom, it says copy and solve. So if you need extra paper, you may come see me and get some paper to work these problems out on. You now know how to line up your decimal and use the correct place value positions to add your decimals.